Hello everyone, Hugs the Arts here. I wanted to do this quick tutorial uh, trying to explain how to use the selection tool on Procreate. So let's get stuck in. Um, split recording. So I've got a camera so you can see what I'm doing from the top and I'm screen recording what I'm actually doing at the same time. So the selection tool is one of the most powerful tools you can use on Procreate. It's got numerous, uh, numerous functions and options of use so you're gonna find it if you just look up here in the top left it looks like a little s that's why it's often referred to as the s tool um, it's uh, also known as the lasso tool so it's got a few different names um, which you might hear of and it's basically a selection tool so you're gonna be selecting something so that you can only work within that area or you can invert and cut away any area that is not within your selection. So this is sort of how it can be used. I'm gonna be showing you how I use it. Um, you can create whole pictures. You can color them in using only the S tool if you wanted to. Um, so let's dive straight in. So this is a sketch I did. So the first thing I like to do is select the whole silhouette of my sketch and pick a color like a skin color a base color and that's going to be my building block for the rest so go ahead and select select tool that little s thing you're going to get a little box pop up in the bottom and at the moment you can see i got it on rectangle we're going to be going to freehand like so uh, when you're using this you can if you keep your pen nib on the screen you're going to be dragging like so and the selection will follow you wherever you desire double tap and start again if you want to get some hard angles you can just oh, it's gone off you can just sort of click at a destination point and it will give you a hard straight straight line to that point like so so it's great for for doing background um, shading and stuff like that it's a really quick quick way to do things like that so that said we close our selection when we make our way back to the dot like so and there is our selection um, here we got options we can work straight away within this um, within this option here now but we can't actually go outside our our little selection which we just created. You could drop and fill. Um, but what I like to do personally, just as like a safeguard, I like to, if I just start again, I'm just gonna show you how I use it straight from the bat. So I'm gonna silhouette the whole thing and color it in with a base color, which is a skin tone. So I'm just gonna go around. You can see it's a very loose sketch as well. So we haven't got to be too neat. Just going around all of that. Not taking too much interest in the hair at the moment. I'll save that and do that at a later time. Just sort of going around the, the main silhouette of the face. I'm gonna just come down to the body and this is not about me being neat and colouring it in now, I just want to show you rather quickly because I know you don't want to sit there and watch a 30 minute video on how to do it. I'm trying my best to explain it in quick time. So we're just going to go all the way around our selection like so and meet back up with our dot. That's our selection closed. Then the bottom in this little box next to color fill you're gonna see save and load tap that once and you're gonna get I mean they're previous which I saved so I'm just gonna delete them because it's irrelevant for this uh, tutorial delete them you're gonna get a selections box come up if you hit the little plus everything you've just circled and closed off is now going to be saved as selection one so our base layer now um, no matter what happens if our iPad crashes or or whatever 
we'll always have that in our saved and load um, bits. So it's there, we can work on new layers with this. We can work on the current layer with this selection. So this is why it's so important. You can, you, you can utilize it for certain parts. If you want to do the pupils, you can just highlight the pupils, like, or the irises, sorry, like so. And then like that. Now if we uh, save and load, now we've got just our pupils saved, so we can always go back. And once we hit that, we can't go outside our pupils, so we could kind of, oh, not on the pen. You see what I'm saying? We can only color within that selection. I like to sort of do the main silhouette of my base with a skin tone if I'm doing people. You can use this for anything. And I work my way up from there. So next, I'm going to be sort of going to say her dress, which is the next layer up. So let's get the S tool. And I'm going to just be going around the outlines of her dress very loosely. Trying to go as quick as possible. Uh, it will take a bit of getting used to. It's like using a very unstreamlined pen. It's loose and it's quick. But you do get used to it. And in certain parts, obviously, you can just click to the dot to finish it if you're still within your, your possibilities. Let's save that one. So our dress, our uh, irises, and our skin or whole base feature is, is done. So the other thing I was obviously gonna do is the hair. So let's just quickly do the hair. I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible just to show you. I'm not gonna be too careful. That's saved. And now I wanna do more to this selection. So I just carry on. I've got that locked in already. And I just carry on. I'm gonna go around and get the rest of that hair, just very loosely. D, D, D. Like so. And we'll just go up around there and we'll close that off. I'm gonna get a few strands in. And close that off. So even though I did it in different parts then, I still closed multiple selections in. And if I hit save and load, hit the plus button, I've got the whole hair locked in now, ready to paint. So how do we start? So we're back where we were as we started. And um, I mean, the one thing I wanna do now is lock in straight away with the skin color any old skin tone that you use. I'll just sort of use that one there. Uh, let's go to my brushes. Let's just use a round brush. It's better to just fill in with a brush rather than drop fill. And I'll show you why now. So this part here is fine, this base part, we can just drop fill. Oh, we haven't selected it yet, have we? Sorry. Uh, click the S tool, save and load. There's our saved options. I'm gonna select my, my silhouette. We can drop fill and pull to 100%. That's one way of doing it, which is fine for this part here. But when you start, when you're on the same layer and you start adding um, different selections, this may happen. So say I wanted a color of hair in. And let's go for a blonde sort of color hair. Our hair is locked in. If we drop and fill, even going to 100% still misses the previous silhouette. So this is why I say it's better to use the brush. And I've actually done all this on the same layer, haven't I? Thought so. <laughs> um, big tip. I'm good at this. Uh, start on a layer below, your ink line work layer, clearly, which I'm sure you know. So let's start again. Base layer is locked in, skin tone, we can drab and drop this bit here, 100%. Hair, 
we could work on a layer above if we wanted to or we could work on the same layer it's entirely up to you what i like to do is this is how i do it i've got my skin there now so i'm going to just work uh, the basic color variations while i'm there so i'm just going to go a little bit more saturated into the pinks and i'll sort of just just dash in my my sort of redness for the cheeks and my um i'll fill up that just dash that in just for color variation more than anything else it's good to add, add a bit of color variation and it just makes it more eye-catching at the end so that's done moving on to the hair s tool click yeah you can see what it looks like so you think yep that's the hair got our color and this time i'm gonna just be painting it in and not actually oh we got alpha lock on so we can't this is going good um let's get alpha lock off and let's paint it in so we got our hair locked in let's add some variation we're still locked only to our hair selection add some variation in where it might be darker or different shades like so and maybe even maybe even lighter in some areas too yeah dress save and load click your dress uh, choose a color I'd say we're gonna be sort of a very light blue never go white white or digital black ever And we just color that in like so we'll add our variations in now so we could just add a bit of blues and purples in where you may think it may be necessary maybe even add some warmer some warmer colors too for the lighting i mean that'll do just going to add one more selection in now i'm just going to do this sort of bunch of flowers bouquet thing I'm just going to quickly scribble around that there save and load and obviously now i could just do some sort of green bouquet of flowers there just vary that up a little bit put some pinks in there some yellow okay we can add us we can add a selection to our save and load list at any point whenever we want if you see something and you think I'm gonna do that um, when you first start getting used to using it you can have numerous ones saved but they're always there they're always there to fall back on so let's just put a quick selection in now for the actual eye the eyeball and go around there like so and go around there yep let's get an eyeball color we're locked in we can't go outside that selection now we can add a bit of a bit of variation now to the just the edges maybe purely purely variation okay so how simple was that we haven't had to color inside the lines or worry about layers or anything but we got all our base done already uh, quite neatly too um, you can also obviously let me just do the irises you can also use this method for the shading details and the lighting if you wanted to so let's just color in those eyes add a bit of variation
Okay, lips, we could do the lips if we want to. We may as well, seeing as that's the theme we're going for. Pop the lips in. Save and load it, it's always there. You can always go back to it then. Um, as you get more experienced and used to using it, you can kind of do it like little bits, like the eyes and the lips. You could maybe just do it straight away whilst you're on it without saving it, you know. Color that in. Bit of variation. Always going to be darker shadows at the bottom of the lips and lighter at the top. Variation. We'll just color it teeth in with a pen. So there we go. Little silly things like this is not worth it because I had to just do that and it's done. But for big areas like the hair and, and the, the silhouette in the very beginning and things like that, it's ideal and it's a time saver. Uh, most, most professionals like to get comfortable with the selection tool. So we can also use it for our multiply or shadow layer. So if you pop that on, my shadows are gonna be sort of a a cool warm, if that makes any sense. Nice cool warm for the skin. Maybe a bit. Um, so using the selection tool for this, we can either use numerous um, numerous shapes like we did earlier which is what I tend to do so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna sketch in where I think shadows are gonna be like so a bit around the nose a bit there we can I mean that's gonna be a bit shadowed Bit of shadow there. You can see once I've closed the selection, I've removed my pen and then I'm creating my next selection. Bit underneath the hair. This it's not neat, this is not why I'm doing it. Okay, so that's all the shadow areas on the skin selected. We could save that there now. That's not going nowhere. And we could start again. Now we could get the shadows on the dress. So let's, I mean, it's a very loose sketch. It's quite hard to work out what's what. Yeah, bottom's gonna be a shadow. That's gonna be a shadow. But the problem a lot of beginners make is when they're doing painting and rendering, they go a bit too soft with a, with a soft brush because they think that's how it's supposed to be. You think, you see these brilliant portraits, they're all soft and beautifully rendered. Um, but the big difference between theirs and the beginners is, is, is they got hard edged shadows and colors too. You've got to you've got to mix the hard edge with the soft edge. So we've done all that now. Uh, we can just paint it in. Once we did, I just save that. Didn't actually save the dress one. There we go. So let's just show you on the face a minute. So we just paint in where we selected like so. And we add variation to this too. We just go a bit deeper and we just, just vary it up a little bit for the darker areas, see? Adds more depth instantly and it don't take two seconds. Yeah, we can even lighten it up if you wanted to as well for a softer, a softer look. I never leave my multiply layer on 100%. I'm always tinkering. I'll be sort of dropping it down to about there. Yeah, we do the same thing for our our lighting layer. Selection tool, where's the light gonna be coming from? We might have a bit of light there on the hair. It's especially useful for the hair because you can get some great results. Like so. there 
very very loose I'm uh, trying to get this wrapped up quick save and load let's lock that in that's our lighting layer pick a nice light lighting color whatever it may be uh, let's go a bit darker for now and let's color in all of our lighting layer here you go vary it up I've started dark I'm gonna go lighter lighter and lighter and I'm gonna go even lighter in some parts gonna come out basically white for the glistening highlights like so but it's a good way to add variety and accuracy to your work now what I said about the hard and soft edges is once you've got to this point um, you can just blend out some parts to create that hard and soft look so grab a blender brush where's my brush set gone there it is I haven't been on my Procreate for a while. I've been doing sort of um, traditional art on paper and stuff. So I forgot where all my brushes are, which is not good. So I am just going to use, have I got one in my gift set? No, I could use, no, oh yeah, let's use that thing, right very hard in some parts so that we could just blend that out a bit a little bit there look see soften it off a little bit we're very hard by there keep some um, hard edges and vary it up it's all about variety uh, let's move on to the light creating variety and interest and look how easy it is to use you can basically use it like a like a brush so that's the s tool the selection tool the lasso tool whatever you call it and i wanted to do this tutorial because beginners just picking up procreate are going to be totally unaware of it and they're going to be struggling with how can i why does why does this happen let's just shut that down so I draw a box I draw a box and I go to a new layer because that's what all the tutorials say to do and I drag and it just fills the whole page and I go underneath the my line art and it still fills the whole page there's nothing I can do selection tool is your friend and especially with things like shapes because you just bang bang that's not a straight square but you know what I'm saying bang 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 save it just get in the habit of saving it because it can save you a lot of heartache um, it's really good for doing little lighting details and things too um, say I had some really intricate lighting going on you can really really add some crazy highlight stuff going on with this I'm going to do it like that let's just go up and you see you can you can get really detailed with it and use it to your best ability you can use it at any point in your portrait picture, whatever you're doing. Shut that off. Bring my lady back up. Girl, little girl, whatever it is. Any point in this portrait, I can open up a new layer and think, I'm going to add some more. I want to get some more going on with that hair. So you could just go in. 
it's always there for you. Rim lighting around the edge. It's always there for you. So um Yeah, so hopefully you use it, utilize it um, to the best of your abilities. When you get used to it, I guarantee you it's worth it. Let's just do a bit of thing. Most people watching this who are used to Procreate, you know, this is not going to apply to you. You're going to know all about the S tool. But in my Facebook group, Procreate Learn and Share, by the way, um, there's a lot of beginners. And the S tool is something that eludes them. They open it up and think, oh, whew. and they're scared to try it. Why waste your time trying it when you're still trying to learn to draw? So that's why I'm hoping this tutorial helps. We can get some good details with the eyes. I've done that there. Colour that in, that may be a little bit overkill, but of course, variety. So we can go dark at the top and a little bit lighter in some parts there. For that, we can use it for our final highlights right at the end where you, you know your real white highlights. There you go. It's the sort of shapes you get in. In eyes and yeah, paint it in. You can even get the variety if you use an eraser. And you can play with it a bit, fade some of it out for even more interest anyway guys that's it that's my little mini tutorial on the selection tool so please subscribe and like and um, yeah let me know in the comments if there's another another sort of beginners feature which you're not aware of I wouldn't mind doing one on this baby let me just show you not them, they're not even lit. Another very critical tool, liquify. Down the bottom there. For final tweaks, something don't look quite right, you can always go in with liquify and just, and just alter things, yeah? Double tap, double tap, double tap, don't like it. Start again. I just want her eye to be bigger there, you know, I want it to be smiling more. Don't like the dress too tight. Heads too small. You can make subtle changes with liquify. I wouldn't mind doing a tutorial on that. Anyway, uh, that's been 28 minutes. It's been too long. So um, thanks for watching.